experience when they get out. Well, what do you suggest to get people over this, get them through well, the stages, and so they come out at least uh, on the one hand, not bitter, I, not angry, and I think on the one hand, like you went through, you had a lot of hope. So you went through counseling, so mm -hmm. even though it looked like divorce was proceeding, what you did was you said, wait a minute, let's take a last look at this relationship. I think that's excellent. So at least that does alleviate some guilt, and your wife apparently was willing to do that. Yes. A lot of times the well, other partner's not willing to do that. Okay. No, she wanted to do it more than I did at first, and then when I got into it with her, then I started to see the problems that we had a long time ago that I wasn't even looking at mm -hmm. and refusing to deal with. and. Um, then, you know, you come to the fact that, no, we're not going to be able to save this. Right. I think that was a better way of doing it than just both of us storming away. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is good. You have to sit and look at each other and say, this is what went wrong, and you know it. And one of the things that I ask people to do is to think about what they would have done differently in the relationship. Mm. What would you have done differently oh. uh, in order not to have this relationship break up? And I think, you know... Well, what does that do for you? Prepare you for the next one or at least give you good well, feelings about the one you've just... <laughs> no, it does, a, well, it does a couple of things. One is it certainly lessens or dissipates your guilt. Mm -hmm. And so that if I can say, okay, I contributed to this problem in this marriage, this percentage, uh, this is what I could have done differently, then what I have done is I feel less guilty because I have now owned my behavior. The other thing is it d really does prepare you for the next So marriage. you don't repeat. Right. Yeah. Okay. Doris, nice to have you with us <laughs> today. Don't you. forget the book Thank is you. Happily Ever After. We'll right. be back after these messages. We're back with our man of the hour, Bruce Boxleitner. I want to talk briefly about uh, some of the things that... Uh, you're going through <laughs> other than uh, yeah, really. marriage and uh, post-marriage, but to your career, Scarecrow is uh, now off into it's syndication. It's defunct. It's yeah. a magic land of syndication, and uh, it was a marvelous show, and I enjoyed the heck out of it, you mm -hmm. know. But uh, everything has to come to an end, and uh, I came to grips with that very quickly and then went off to the South Pacific to do a uh, television movie, two films back-to-back, -back, and uh, yeah. now I'm on vacation. What kind of movies? Uh both for CBS, and one was a, um, I don't want to say a war film, but I played a soldier in it. We're going to see a clip from that pretty soon. Mm -hmm. That's on tomorrow night, right? Yeah, tomorrow yeah. night. And then I did a uh, return with an old, old friend of mine uh, doing The Gambler 3 with Kenny Rogers. And it was, it was a, a ball, and uh, we were in Santa Fe, New Mexico for seven weeks, and... Uh, and Cowboys and Indians, it was a blast. Great. Well, now, the one tomorrow night is entitled... Angel and Green. All right. Yes. Now, we do have uh, uh, some moments from Angel and Green, so let's take a look at that, and we'll be right back uh, with more conversation with Chris. Right. How is the training coming? Slow. Well, the people are starting to really trust you. That's good. I'm not so sure. What do you mean? I mean that they are a peaceful, gentle people. And I'm afraid of what this will do to them. Well, sister, it is the 20th century, and the good guys don't have much choice. But still, coming here and teaching them to kill... Oh, wait a second. Just wait a second. It is not killing. But isn't that what all these weapons are designed to do? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. But without all these weapons, we couldn't defend ourselves. That argument has cost a lot of innocent lives. Uh-huh, and it has saved a lot, too. It's still killing. It's defending. When God said thou shalt not kill, he did not mean it just for the bad guys. Okay, so what is your answer, huh? Just sit there and pray and hope that the bad guys will go away? I do not just sit there and pray. Well, I bet if there is a God up there, he thinks it's pretty stupid that we just sit back and expect him to handle everything. Well, I want to tell you something. I will be damned if I'll sit by and do nothing. You act like some bloodthirsty maniac doing a bad John Wayne imitation. I do not. You do, too. I do not. Ah. <laughs> That's pretty good there in your yeah. sidewalls. Yeah, that, of course, was the lovely Susan Day yes. from L.A. Law. LA Law. Uh -huh. And uh, she was playing a nun. I know she didn't look like it there, but a very, very contemporary nun. The story takes place today in a very fictional, faraway country. But it's about uh, two very strong-willed, opinionated people who are, each have their own religions, mine being a, uh, a Special Forces Green Beret and hers being a Catholic sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, these two people, uh, at first, uh, don't agree with each other and can't stand each other. Don't and tell us. Things start don't tell us. And I, I oh, can't let you know. The church has enough trouble. I know it. Know it. <laughs> and guess Bruce, what? what? <laughs> I know I know All right, Bruce, thanks so Thank much. you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much for being with us, Bruce Boxliner. Come on. Thomas, we're going to continue.
continue our five-part series with Elizabeth Taylor and discover the passion that created it.